Lynn. Miss Lynn has a birthday, 39 and holding. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lynn. Happy birthday to you. Two more birthdays, anniversary. Got to count the boat, does it? Okay. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us prepare for worship. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Let us pray. O merciful Father, do not consider what we have done against you, but what our blessed Savior has done for us. Do not consider what we have made of ourselves, but what he is making of us for you, our God. O oh, that Christ may be wisdom and righteousness, sanctification and redemption to every one of our souls. May his precious blood may cleanse us from all our sins, and your Holy Spirit renew and sanctify our souls. May he crucify our flesh with its passion and lusts, and cleanse all our brothers and sisters in Christ across the earth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. This time we'll have Phil come up to lead us in worship. Good morning. Good morning. You'll find one of these praise song books, and let's turn to number 31. Soon and very soon, we'll stand together and worship the Lord this morning. <clears throat> Soon and very soon, we are going to see the game. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the game. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the game. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the game. No more dying there. We are going to see the game. No more dying there. We are going to see the game. No more dying there. We are going to see the game. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the game. No more crying. No more crying there. We are going to see the king. No more crying there. We are going to see the king. No more crying there. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the king. Soon and very soon. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the king soon and very soon. We are going to see the king soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the king. Then if you would turn back to number 28. Seek ye first, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek 
Would you please be seated? I'd like to welcome you all to Andrews Chapel. As you can see, John is in the choir, but he's uh, not up here. He's suffering from uh, dishpan hands, I would say, from scrubbing all the pots and pans up in Ambassador Camp, where he's been working for the last week and also this week coming up. And he's also peeling all the potatoes for the meals for the kids. Do we have any announcements this morning? Any announcements? Yeah. Any other announcements? I have one. The flowers that are on the altar are given in honor of Betty and Wayburn Walton's anniversary. And, and if I'm correct, I understand this is your 71st anniversary. <laughs> Do we have any other announcements at this time? VBS. If you haven't been over in the Fellowship Hall, take a trip over there. The Fellowship Hall has been converted from our just our regular old Fellowship Hall, but to a time long ago where there was princes and kings and and all kinds of things, knights in the armor and all that kind of good stuff. You'll see castles and drawbridges and everything. We've changed <coughs> that whole thing to the medieval times. And go over and take a look, it's quite something. Also, there's gonna be a dress rehearsal, when? On the 26th. On the 26th. We would like you all to become the kids. Yes. Come and enjoy Vacation Bible School. See what the kids are going to be doing. You're going to hit, see what they're going to be studying, their crafts, and you're even going to be given a meal. So come and enjoy and be a kid for that evening. What time is that on the 26th? Starting on the 6th, 6 o'clock. Starting on 6 o'clock. Hope to see you all there. Any other announcements? If there's no other announcements at this time, we'll have the kids come up for children's time. Come on, little people. Allie Grace, you want to come up here? Come on, we got some candy. All right. Where's my little box of crayons that was up here? Should be a little box of crayons. Y'all sitting on them? Y'all better give me my crayons. Good morning, everybody. Come on, Sonny. 
This is wonderful. Come on, Sonny. All right, we're going to count to three, okay? You ready? One, two, three. Good morning, Father. Thank you. And what's God doing? Smiling. Smiling. All right, what are we going to do next? What are we going to do next? Upton, what are we going to do? Are we going to sing? Let's sing. Ready? Upton, we're going to sing. Ready? What are we singing? What are we singing? Ready? Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones who can belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Okay, this may take just a minute, Mr. Warren, okay? But I'm going try to try to speed up. But it's so good, so we can't rush through it. Do y'all know what this is? What is it? It's a box of crayons. Well, when I was a little girl, my mama bought me a box of 64. The, the pen, had the sharpener on the back. Oh, my goodness, and my coloring book. And I was in pure heaven. I love me some crayons. And you know what I hated most of all was to break a crayon. It, it, and it's still one of my pet peeves. I still cringe whenever I see children break crayons. And I, I've gotten better. But, and I, well, or, well, mix, mix Play-Doh together, yes. But, <laughs> but I digress. So anyway, um, so one day after church, we were at my grandma's, and I fell asleep. And when I woke up, there was a little girl there, and she was coloring in my coloring book. Mama? She let that girl color, and I was so upset. But this is not a lesson in, in sharing, okay? Sharing is caring, but we're going to talk about something else, okay? Um, I want y'all to get down here and get a crayon and write on this piece of paper, because I want to tell you what's on. Spread it out. You can share paper if you need to, um, and you might even have to share crayons, because there's only eight in this box, okay? So take your, time, take your turns, okay? On this box, it says bold and bright construction paper crayons. Bold and bright. Well, it's empty now. There was crayons in it. So y'all draw. Usually on black construction paper, you cannot see crayons, right? Y'all go ahead. Right, 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 right. Right away, color. Just draw squigglies. It don't matter. Squigglies are right. Jesus loves me. Can you see your crayons on there? Yes, even the black one, you can see it on there. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you something. That black paper represents sin, okay? It represents a dark world and sin. And that crayon represents you, okay? If you have the light of Jesus in you, if you are bold and bright, even in a dark, dark world, people can see the light of Jesus. Now I want you to do something that is unthinkable, okay? Break your crayon. Break it, break your crayon, break it, break it, break it, break it, break your crayon. Did y'all, oh, did that hurt y'all heart like it did my, break your crayon. Now, I want you to keep drawing with it. Get, give Allie Grace one of those crayons and let her draw something. Give her a broken piece of crayon. Well, give her a piece, give her a crayon. There, Allie. there you go, color on that piece of paper. Hey, is your crayon still working? How about that? How about that? You know what? If I were to take that crayon and go up there and take that light on that candle and melt it up a little bit, I could stick them back together. I could. I sure could. Do you know that everybody out here is a broken crayon? <laughs> everybody out there is a broken crayon. And you know what? They can still do work for Jesus because you know what? He fixes broken things and he uses broken things. And you might not be broken right now, little people, but one day you will be. But that doesn't mean God can't use you. Okay? Warren, can you come pray for these little precious broken pieces? <laughs> Let 
pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you for this day. We thank you for these children. They are our future. And we pray, Lord, that you have the teachers here and all of us are responsible for leading them and guiding them into their Christian lives. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with them always. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As John says, well, while the children are finding their way, I'm going to do something a little bit different because I forgot something in here, and it's very important. Would you please take a few brief moments and greet your neighbors? All right, your brief time is over. Have a seat, please. This time is for Philip. Lead us in the hymn of praise. Four seventy-two. Order Christian. Four seventy-two. If you take your hymnal or view on the screen, four seventy-two. Onward, Christian soldier. That's a good one. That'll get the blood pumping. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before Christ the Sad. 
standing, let us confirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed, which can be found on page 691 in the hymnal, or also on the monitors. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Would you please be seated? It is always our privilege as the body of Christ to come together and to share with each other uh, prayer requests that we may have or joys if there's something that's going on in your life that you want the congregation to celebrate with you. We would love to do that as well. So do we have any uh, special prayer requests or praises today? Yes. Beautiful, wonderful, thank you. Yes, Sheriff. Okay. And I'd like to remind everybody there are pew cards if you make a prayer request. Uh, if you would jot that down when the offering plate comes around and just put that in, there are a group of folks that come to the church every week and they hold those cards and they pray over those prayer cards. So whether you sp speak verbally or if you've got a request and you don't feel comfortable uh, speaking in public, just jot that down and put that in the, in the offering plate when it comes by. Others? Yes, Miss Betty. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. 
others. Yes. Oh, good. Right. Wonderful. Good news. Great. Thank you. Others? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, good. Sammy and Betty Leonard. Others? Good one. I got something I want to share, but it's going to take me. Well, you go right ahead. Um, you want to let him share? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before I start this, Warren, I'm, I don't want to take any air out of the room. Uh, we have got the best lay leader that a man can have. Um, for y'all that don't know, I grew up in Fair Bluff, a little town hour from here. And Fair Bluff never had a, um, much of industry. But we did have a couple of plants. We had one place called Stone Manufacturing that made Umbro shorts. Had another place, Glastron, that made boats. And those things came and go. They've both been closed probably over 30 years. But when I was younger, we would have people that would move to Fair Bluff for a year or two. Um, they'd work at these plants, and they'd realize that, you know, there's no future here, and they'd go on to the next place. When I was going to Fair Bluff, there was a, a young boy. I'm going to change his name because I would never want to hurt him any more than I have. But uh, let's just say his name was Larry Zip, very plain first name, and the last name was unusual. But um, he was one of those people. Uh, he was a little, little white boy. He was always a lot smaller than us, and his shirts were always too big, and his blue jeans were always too big. And we, you know, we always thought he was little, but the chances are that he was probably malnourished. Um, we tortured him. We tortured him as a child. Probably sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. He was the, the ridicule of, of everyone. His ears always stuck out because his hair was cut with, with probably homemade trimmers or something, and his brother was the same way. Clothes always dirty, and they always smelled a little funny. And we'd pick on him endlessly, savagely. And we hurt him. He left. Probably by the end of eighth grade, he was gone on to the next town because he wasn't there long. It bothered me as I grew up thinking about Larry. How about I'd hurt him, and how about I'd bullied him and picked on him and done all the wrong things that I could do to someone. And it just always bothered me. And I, after, after I came to Christ, I still continued to think about Larry. And I said, Lord, if I ever get the chance, if I ever get the chance and I see him one day, I'm going to tell him how sorry I am. The Lord, what are the chances of that? Larry was moving on to wherever he moved to. So I'm at the lake this week working in camp, and i got to get gas. So I go to the late local convenience store and late walk them all, and I get gas. When I go in to get, tell the fellow I want $20 worth of gas, I notice his name tag, and it said Larry. This has been over 40 years ago, probably 45 years ago. And so I go, I go back out, and I pump the gas, and the Holy Spirit's just going, John, that's him. That's him, John. So I go back in the station, and I asked him, I said, sir, what's your last name? And he said, Zip. And I looked at him, and I put my hand out, and I said, I'm John Bracey. And he didn't, he didn't register to him. And I, I said, we went to school some time ago when we were youngins. And uh, I said, I, I want to apologize to you for what I did. He said, man, he said, he said, I went to 10 different high schools, lived in 10 different cities when I was a kid. He said, I don't even remember that. He says, I'm sorry, I don't even remember you. And uh, he said, I've had 14 DUIs. I've been in prison. He said, but thank God I gave my life to Jesus Christ some years ago. Wow. And um, Oh, but, but wait, there's more. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he says, but I've been saved for a long time now. He says, I went to college and got my degree, finished in college, and you know, me and my wife, we were doing okay. He said, everybody told me I'd never get my license back, but I did. And he says, and God's working on me and helping me in my life. And I told him, I said, well, 
you don't remember me, but I remember you. And I said, I, I hope that you can understand that I was a young boy, 12, 13 years old, and I was mean. I was being mean. I said, but I've never forgot about you. I said, if I ever got the chance, I was going to ask you to forgive me. And he looked at me. He says, John, I forgive you. He said, Lord, he says, Jesus, forgive me. He says, I can certainly forgive you. So here we are in a convenience store, late Waccamaw, in the middle of nowhere. And God saw fit in the midst of all of that to afford me forgiveness and afford him the opportunity to allow, allow one of his tormentors, one of his persecutors, that he has had so many he couldn't even remember this one, then humble himself before him and ask for forgiveness. Now, I tell you that story because it's just a beautiful story. It's a miracle for me to be able to unload that burden. But in that story, there is every one of us, every one of us, you were either the tormentor or you were the tormented you were picked on or you did the picking on. And I look at his life and I had a part to play with every one of those DUIs. I had a part to play in that. That falls upon me too. But thank God, thank God, thank God, I'm forgiven. Amen. Amen. And that's my joy for today. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> All right. Ain't God good? Amen. Amen. Well, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, you never cease to amaze us. You always surprise us. Surprised by joy. Surprised by peace. Lord, surprised by provision, surprised by forgiveness, surprised by welcome, by love, by acceptance. Lord, we praise you this morning that you surprise us. Lord, we love surprises. We thank you today that you love us with an everlasting love. And Lord, that you know our hearts and you know the things that are on our minds. Lord, the prayer requests that have been made today, you know about those things. But you ask us, Lord, to speak them, to present them to you, to lay them at your feet. So, Lord, that's where we lay them. And, Lord, we lay our burdens there, too. Lord, we, la we lay those things that are heavy on our hearts at your feet, Lord, knowing that you can take care of them and that you will, that you're more than able to do it. So we praise you this day for hearing our prayers, for answering them, and Lord, for surprising us with your love. All these things we pray in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Father, we ask your, bl your blessings upon these humble gifts that we present to you. We ask you, Lord, that you would bless them and use them in the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our scripture lesson this morning is found in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. And if you're following along in the Pew Bible, I don't have it here, so. Yes, I do. Wait a second. Where is that? 191. I got to get the right book. You can also follow along on the monitors. Let us pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for the words I'm about to read. Your words, Father, may they be used to enrich our lives so we may enrich the lives of others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I'm sorry, would you please stand for the reading? Too many things going on. Let me start over. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemns sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit. Since the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you through the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of God for the people of God. Be to God. Please be seated. A few weeks ago, I traveled to Florida for a golf outing with a bunch of guys that were in the same fire department I was in when I lived up in New Jersey. Most of them I knew, and there were a couple of them, the new guys that had joined after I had left. I went to this outing two years ago and had a great time. And last year I didn't go because I had to attend, now listen to this, my godson's son's bar mitzvah. <laughs> now figure that one out. My godson is Christian. Of course, his wife is Jewish. Therefore, his son had his bar mitzvah. And I had promised that I would go to this year's golf outing. It didn't take too long to realize that this outing would turn into a week-long drunk fest. <laughs> a time for partying, yelling, foul language, and everything else the ways of the world could throw at you. So as long as this broken world exists, sin will keep knocking at our door as long as we live in this broken, twisted world. Are you ready to fight the battle? What weapons do we have to battle Satan and his temptations that he fills our minds with every second? of every day. Our arsenal can be found in Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 18. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, 
so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet Put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all these, take the sheath of faith with which you will be able to quench the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Paul has given us the tools we need to fight the battle with this sinful world we live in. In today's scripture reading, Paul tells us there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Are you still ready to fight this battle? Paul gave us the tools we need to fight with because this fight isn't a physical battle, but a battle of the mind, a battle of your thoughts, and a battle of your emotions. Satan is eager to tempt you with sinful thoughts and feelings. Paul even wrote about his own struggles in his fight against his old nature within. The law of the Spirit is the forceful and effective operation of the Holy Spirit in our lives that draws us to the cross of Jesus. The Holy Spirit leads us to understand our sin and then points us to the only deliverer from our sins, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's through the Holy Spirit that we come to know the demands of the Mosaic Law which are the Ten Commandments that God gave the Israelites through Moses, and the first five books of the Old Testament, also known as the Torah. Since we could not fulfill the law, and God knew we couldn't, God sent his Son to fulfill the law for us. And not only did Jesus fulfill the Mosaic law, but he also took upon himself the condemnation we deserve by the law of sin. It is through the crucifixion that Jesus paid the price for our sins and death. As Christians, we must be in Christ to receive this freedom from condemnation and death. The good news is the price has been paid through Jesus. John 25 verse 24 states, very truly, I tell you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. But just because Jesus paid the price for our sins doesn't mean that we can go back to our old lifestyles. We must be careful. Satan just sits and waits for that moment when we drop our guard so we, he can wage his attack. But now, are we ready? Are we ready to fight the battle? And we have the tools to be victorious. We have the armor of God. We have the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness. Our feet are fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. The shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit and the power of prayer through the Holy Spirit. Yes, we are prepared for the spiritual battles, battles we face. Not only do we have the armor of God, but we have God in the war room setting the battle plans we must face. Most of the time, we don't even realize it. Usually, I don't pack my devotions and a Bible for a trip like a golf outing. But a little voice told me to pack it for this trick in case I just needed some alone time from the rest of the group. I can tell you from experience that it doesn't take very long to be pulled into the worldly mindset. 
God armed me with his word for the trip. He kept me on the straight and narrow pathway that Jesus wants us to be on that leads to us to our heavenly home. And I am so thankful for that, the small voice that spoke to me that day. And now I'd like to close with a devotional written by Jerry Bridges. It's entitled, Saved by Wrath. Only the God-fearing Christian can truly appreciate the love of God. He sees the infinite gulf between a holy God and a sinful creature, and the love that bridged that gulf through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. God's love for us is many faceted, but he supremely demonstrated it by sending his sons to die for our sins. All other aspects of his love are secondary and in fact are made possible for us through the death of Christ. The truly godly person never forgets that he was at one time an object of God's holy and just wrath. He never forgets that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. And he feels along with Paul that he is himself the worst of sinners. But then as he looks to the cross, he sees that Jesus was his astonishing, atoning sacrifice. He sees that Jesus bore his sins on his own body and that the wrath of God, the wrath which he, a sinner, should have borne, was expended completely and totally upon the Holy Son of God. And in this view of Calvary, he sees the love of God. The love of God has no meaning apart from Calvary. And Calvary has no meaning apart from the holy and just wrath of God. Jesus did not die just to give us peace and a purpose in life. He died to save us from the wrath of God. He died to re reconcile us to a holy God who was alienated from us because of our sin. He died to ransom us from the penalty of sin, the punishment of everlasting destruction, shut out by the presence of the Lord. He died that we, the just objects of God's wrath, should become, by his grace, heirs of God and co-heirs with him. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Now we'll close with our closing hymn. Would you please stand for hymn number 477. Stand up, stand up for Jesus.
mighty God, bless and keep you forever, grant you peace, perfect peace, courage in every and ever, lift your eyes and see his face, feel his grace surround you. and keep you forever. Amen.